Welcome to Charleston Parents Connect. I am Danica Todd, your certified doula, licensed massage therapist, and certified yoga and Pilates instructor. It is my intention through sharing content and creating community to transform your relationships, inspire connection, and lead communities to live unapologetically. Today, I'm going to share my family history, talk about the structure and function of your tongue and lip tie, and our options when an imbalance arises. At the end, I'm also going to invite you to subscribe to my email list so you can easily resource information, just like this video, and to join a free parenting group on Facebook so we can start building our community of diverse, unapologetic parents just like you. Does that sound good? All right, great. So let's get right into my history. I'm trying to remember the exact time it hit me that I was fed formula from a bottle. I have seen the pictures a million times, but it never really sunk in until my mid-30s. See, I'm the oldest of six children, and I was old enough to remember my mom nursing four of us. I knew I was cloth diapered, I remember begging for store-bought um, junk food, like Twinkies, because that's what all the other kids had, and I wasn't old enough to appreciate that she baked everything homemade. So why would I ever think I eat formula? I was completely shocked the day it sunk in. So let's pause for a second, because I want to make one thing totally clear, okay? I don't have anything against formula. As a matter of fact, two of my three children used formula. The problem was that I was basing my identity on how my mom raised my siblings instead of my childhood. It escaped me that the reason why my supply stopped at nine months with Dharma could it all be related to my mom's experience or my DNA? See, Dharma was pre-social media, pre-mom wars, pre-breast milk versus formula debates, and pre-mass digital photography, which is why she will not have as many baby pictures. Which also means that if there were debates going on, we didn't have access to everybody's opinion from the other side of the country, let alone the other side of the world, like we do today, right? I mean, it's frustrating. So when my supply stopped at nine months, she ate formula. Kind of the same way when my mom couldn't feed me enough herself, she still fed me. There was no guilt, no shame, just food. When Macy was born seven years later, parenting him was a different world. We had mom blogs, mom groups, mom swaps. Gone were the days of feeding innocence. I was so wrapped up in my identity identity as nursing him that I would cry over my supply. I had to syringe feed him when he was born. I kept asking about a tongue tie but everyone said he was normal. It hurt every time he latched. I also had to roll out his upper lip every time he ate and at 10 months I lost all my milk supply only on my left side. I was so desperate for answers. And it was then that I saw someone else post a picture of a lip tie. And it was that moment that I finally started getting those answers. So he was diagnosed with a stage four lip tie and a posterior tongue tie. And we elected to get his lip tie laser corrected. And then, let me think. 
17 months later, I get pregnant with Harper. They're 27 months apart. I promise myself that if my supply drops, I'm not going to freak out this time. My identity is not wrapped up into what my baby eats. It's the fact that they do eat. So a peep into her birth story. She's born at 6.05 a.m. on a Sunday morning and she is lifted to my chest with her first cries. And I take a glance into her mouth. She is perfect in every way, including her stage four lip tie and anterior tongue tie. So we had her corrected, both the lip and the tongue tie. Milk was flowing. She's perfect. I mean, all caps, perfect at every wellness visit. She turns nine months and the milk stops. I had done everything possible, but this time I knew I had done it all. So there was no guilt, no shame, no questions, only food. Food that sometimes comes from your breast and sometimes comes in a bottle. So why did having the right information and the right treatment from the start still end up with no supply at nine months? I don't have a perfect answer for you, but I do know it breaks down into two categories. It boils down to structure and function. And then you need to decide what treatment plan aligns with your family values. So let's get started with structure. Structure is the arrangement or formulation of the tissue. This is how your baby grows into a tiny person. So when a tongue tie is present, there's a tight band of tissue called the frenula. A lip tie is the same thing, but rather than attaching the bottom of the tongue to the floor of the mouth, it attaches the upper lip to the upper gum. This becomes a problem when the function of the lip or the tongue becomes restricted. So this can have um, several symptoms that show up for you, like a over milk supply, under milk supply, you could have a gassy baby, you could have colic type symptoms, and frequent nursing, those are just a few. So remember when I had to roll out Macy's upper lip every time he latched? That was due to a structural tie impairing the function of the lip during nursing. So how do you know what to do? Well, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time because your worst nightmare is about to happen. It depends. It really truly depends. What was your birth like? Did you push for a long time? Was there forceps? Surgery? Suction? Are there any asymmetries? Is it really a tie? Or is the tissue tight due to another reason? What options do you have in your area? And what aligns with your family values? But I did promise you some answers. So here are my recommendations in order of cost. You can contact your local La Leche League for free peer-to-peer -peer support. You can contact a lactation consultant or a postpartum doula for a professional assessment. You can find a cranial sacral therapist, a pediatric physical therapist, or a chiropractor who specializes in this kind of work with young children. And finally, you can visit your pediatrician or a pediatric dentist who specializes in ties to correct a true, authentic, structural and functional issue. I really wish it was as simple as just saying, hey, you got the money? Just 
go get it clipped or lasered. But as you can see, this isn't really a diagnosis at home or in a short YouTube video kind of situation. What this video can do for you though, is give you a starting point to ask the right questions, gather the information you need to make an informed decision, and make a game plan that works for you. Because you can wait, you can get some body work, or you can get it repaired in any order that you want. And there's no guarantee any of those options are going to be the right answer for you. So just remember, there is a difference between diagnosis and treatment. It can be over or under treated once you have the information, but it's your responsibility as the adult to collect the data and make that informed decision for you and your children. My biggest desire through this video is that you make that informed decision feeling confident in that choice, no matter what the outcome is. I know this week's video is longer than usual, so I'm going to honor your time by wrapping this up for you. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about my family. You also learned some keywords you can use when talking to professionals about a possible tie. You will see attached as a separate link a video that you will be taken off site to Vimeo. And I highly recommend that you take a moment to watch it. It's only nine seconds long and it's worth that extra click on your computer because what it's gonna show you is what appears to be a stage three tie, but it has full functionality. So it's not really a tie, therefore it would not need to be corrected. So I want you to kind of see what that looks like as well. Um, I reached out for permission to use it in this video and I was denied, so I am getting you access to it through the proper channels. So this Friday's video is going to be on potty training, and I promise you it is way shorter than this one, so I hope to see you then. I hope you are having a great day, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.